Bonjour and welcome to Saint-Germain-des-Prés, the epicenter of Parisian café culture, where the realms of history, literature and art seamlessly converge over a steaming cup of coffee. In this video, I'll take you on a tour of four iconic cafés that have played a pivotal role in shaping the intellectual landscape of this historic neighborhood. For the people of Paris, sitting down at a café is not just a routine, it's a cultural ritual, an art of living. Whether engaged in lively discussions with friends or immersed in solitary contemplation, savoring an espresso while perusing the daily newspaper, the café experience epitomizes the essence of France, its freedom, its spirit and its zest for life. This cultural significance was tragically underscored on November 13, 2015, when Islamist terrorists targeted numerous cafés, recognizing them as symbols of French identity. Our journey begins at Café Les Deux Magots, established in 1885. A renowned attraction for tourists, this café holds historical significance as the former rendezvous point for France's literary and intellectual elite. After World War II, Les Deux Magots attracted artists and thinkers, hosting stars like Jean-Paul Sartre, Simone de Beauvoir, Albert Camus, Ernest Hemingway, Pablo Picasso, Boris Vian and Juliette Greco. Named after the previous shop that was installed there, from which we made two wooden statues depicting Chinese mandarins, Les Deux Magots is renowned for its breakfast offerings. Today, I will be enjoying breakfast at this iconic café, seated at my table on the inner terrace. I'm going to take the complete formula, even if I would also have been tempted by the Sartre or Hemingway formulas. Here's my breakfast. Since I'm not a coffee drinker, I opted for a hot chocolate in the complete formula. This delightful package includes a croissant, a baguette with strawberry jam, and a glass of freshly squeezed orange juice. Look at the thickness of this hot chocolate. <laughs> Indulging in a full Parisian breakfast at a local cafe is an essential experience for anyone visiting Paris. Undeniably on the pricier side, Lido Mago lives up to its reputation, offering a breakfast experience that truly justifies its cost with exceptional quality. I was sitting in this inner terrace. Just a stone's throw away, here is Café de Flore, also inaugurated in 1885. In this exquisite Art Deco space, or on the terrace overlooking Boulevard Saint-Germain, a fusion of celebrities, locals and tourists creates a vibrant atmosphere. Adorned in Art Deco aesthetics, with red seating, mahogany and mirrors, the interior exudes timeless elegance. The first floor was Jean-Paul Sartre and Simone de Beauvoir's dual-purpose sanctuary, an office by day and a party room by night. After World War II, Café de Flore was the epicenter of Parisian artistic and intellectual life, attracting a burgeoning community of young artists, thinkers and jazz enthusiasts to Saint-Germain-des-Prés. Today I'm going to sit on the veranda and enjoy a refreshing coke amidst this iconic ambience. In 
France, we are used to add a slice of lemon to our Coca-Cola. While the place still draws artists and intellectuals, the motivation has shifted from seeking a pleasant haven to showcasing themselves. With a Coke priced at 8 euro, it's a far cry from the days when patrons used to come driven more by a lack of funds than an inclination for luxury. Just across the boulevard from Café de Flore is the famous Brasserie Lip. More than just a café, Brasserie Lip, a restaurant founded in 1880 by Mr. Lip, stands as a cultural institution in saint germain des prés It was a favoured meeting place for literary giants like Paul Verlaine in the 19th century and Ernest Hemingway. Descending Boulevard Saint-Germain, we arrive at Rue de l'Ancienne Comédie, where our journey concludes at Le Procope. Established in 1686, it holds the distinction of being the oldest literary café. Throughout its history, Le Procope has been a focal point for intellectuals, hosting the lights of Jean de La Fontaine, Benjamin Franklin, Victor Hugo and Oscar Wilde. Le Procope can also be accessed through the charming pedestrian Cours du Commerce Saint-André, offering a delightful terrace during the summer months. Let's get inside. In the present day, while Le Procope maintains its café identity, it is predominantly renowned as a restaurant featuring traditional bourgeois French cuisine. Distinguished by its opulent 18th century decor, it exudes an ambience more reminiscent of a boudoir than the typical café atmosphere found at Café de Flore or Les Deux Magots. At Le Procop, they boast a Grand Cru coffee crafted from Ethiopian beans, employing a piston method that allows for aroma extraction through infusion. This innovating coffee experience is available in both hot and iced variations. So today, I'll have the Procop iced coffee. Surprisingly affordable, the iced coffee stands in stark contrast to the prices found at Flore or Les Deux Magots, which is a pleasant and budget-friendly surprise. I had a great experience at Café Procop. The coffee quality, the inviting atmosphere and the reasonable prices, which aren't solely geared toward tourists. Planning to return for lunch soon, and I'll be sure to share my experience here with you. As we conclude our journey through Saint-Germain-des-Prés Café culture, Remember that each of these cafés carries a piece of Parisian history, where the spirit of intellectual exchange continues to thrive. Whether you're sipping coffee at Les Deux Magots, enjoying the ambience at Café de Flore, 
experiencing the classic charm of brassy lip, or delving into history at Le Procope, you're partaking in a tradition that has shaped the cultural tapestry of this enchanting neighborhood. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to explore my Saint-Germain-des-Prés neighborhood discovery. Simply click on the link here on the top right.